Hello again, everyone. We're back out at the Cedar Hill Cemetery in Vicksburg, Mississippi. And I wanted to bring you along today. I'm, I've been back out here cleaning up a headstone that I found that uh, apparently <laughs> the person who had posted the memorial page on Find a Grave wasn't able to locate the headstone. So I've cleaned it up and taken some photos. And I wanted to show you some of the ones that I discovered did not have memorial pages. And we had a hard time reading this one last time, but the sun is shining on it this time. Um, it's Louisa L. And she was the consort of Robert B. Scott, born in Warren County, Mississippi. And she was born February the 7th, 1826, and died June the 27th of 1855. And at the bottom it says, she rests in peace. Now it's a little windy out today, so I hope I'm not picking up too much wind noise. But on the back side of the Warner family, we have the two obelisk. And... I saw a page for Martha Lawrence, but they're showing her death date was in 1855 and that she was married to Eli W. Lawrence. And looking back through census records, handwritten, those can sometimes be difficult to read. Um, so what I have done is I've created a page for Eli M. Lawrence, and he died October 10th of 1855, and he was our school superintendent that we visited on our last stop out here. Martha Lawrence, I'm unsure if this was his wife because he was married to Martha, but I don't know if this was his wife. So I'm not going to add this picture to that memorial page because the death date does not match. So here we have Susan L. Davidson. And someone had created a memorial page for her, but they had not been able to locate her actual burial site. So I've, cr I've added photos, but I've also taken better photos today that I will add to that memorial page as well. And you can see, unfortunately, I made a little mess, but this was another gentleman that someone had created a page for him, and they had not been able to locate his grave. So I came out this morning, and I cleaned the headstone off. And this was um, one that we visited last time. A Mr. Nicholas Bonagel, and he has a memorial page. They have his name spelled B-O-N-E-N-G-E-L, and I think that's simply because they used the Sexton's report that was printed in the newspaper. Uh, as you can see on his actual headstone, we have his birth date of July 3rd, 1779, and he died August 30th of 1853 and he has an epitaph that I uncovered that says weep not for me it's all in vain weep for your sins from I'm unable to make that out at the moment life is uncertain death is sure sin is the wound Christ is the cure So we cleaned his grave up. I've taken photos to add to his memorial page. I tried to make out something on this open book marker. And it, it's just completely gone. I can't read anything. I thought lifting the, the piece that was lying face down last time and maybe trying to get something off of it would help. But I think it's in worse shape than the other side.
So I'm not able to bring anything out on what that name possibly is. But during editing and creating of the video, I'll see if I can pull anything out. So we'll take a short stroll through a few sections here and um, document those as well. We're starting next to the stout burial where we stopped last time. I only see two in this very front part of this square. And here we have Henry Frank Curtis, born February 14th of 1888 and died August the 8th of 1936. I'm not sure what the 100 F FLT stands for. G.L. Turner died September 24th, 1923, aged 78 years, budded on earth to bloom in heaven. So we're about to step up into the Welch plot. We have Wade C. Welch, September 12th of 1867 to March 17th, 1933. Only see three headstones in this square. This looks like Clara M., wife of Wade C. Welch, August 11th, 1871, March 30th of 1913, I believe. Jessica A., sister of Wade C. Welch, January 1st, 1871 to September 21st, 1929. We have a section that's, that's got the concrete pillars like it's blocking off an area, but I don't see any headstones within it. I'm not going to try to pronounce, maybe that's Carol Gray Cook, October 27th, 1899 to November 21st, 1901. Oh, a very young child. Ellis B. Davidson, Jr., April 30th, 1874, October 10th, 1878, another child. As I mentioned in some of our other videos, 1878 was a hard year with the yellow fever. Nettie. Davison Cook, June 19th, 
1872, November 6th, 1845, 1945, excuse me. Marilyn Davis Sharp. December 3rd, 1889, September 29th, 1956. It looks like someone's been out cleaning some of the stones. I noticed that with the Buck family, the Warner. Albert S. Davison, October 31st, 1868, December 10th, 1902. Caroline Davison, November the 8th, 1848 to February 19th, 1933. Ellis B. Davison. August 19th, 1836 to October 15th, 1933. Thomas W. Bender, born January 10th, 1852 died September the 7th, 1867. Emma J. Bender, born February 9th, 1859, died August the 8th of 1863. We have a tall monument here. And this was erected for William G. Bender, born October 28, 1811, died January 8, 1879. George M. Bender, September 8, 1857, died January 23, 1870. William G. Bender, born October 28, 1811, and died January the 8th, 1879. And we're at the Richardson plot. Mary Eloise Richardson died August 16th, 1938. Lee Richardson died August 10th, 1923. Lee Richardson, 1833 to 1894. Louise Richardson, 1840 to 1921. Norval Richardson, 1877 to 1940.
Mary Richardson, 1897 to 1977. That looks like it's made out of granite to me. Louis Richardson, 1875 to 1876. Mm. Uh, the, the children's graves really get to me. Sally Hamilton, 1837 to 1898. So inside the wrought iron closure here, we have Mason family and McGee. There is a back gate, but that part of the fence is falling down, and I'm not going to attempt to open the gate to enter this section. We'll view these from outside the fence. Elbeck. Mason, born May 20th, 1806, died June 27th, 1862. Virginia M. Mason, born April 24th, 1825, died September 9th, 1862. From that day forth in peace and joyous bliss, they lived together long without debate, nor private jars, nor spite of enemies, could shake the calm assurance of their state. But death the conqueror came, with his dread summons, the brave, the fair, the beautiful obeyed, and followed him to their last home happy in this and they are buried in a common grave and as in life in death united in memory of eugene mcgee of irish descent profound lawyer a good citizen and a generous friend. I'm not, I don't see any dates on that one. Perhaps when I move around from the footstone, we'll be able to see it. Looks like he was a, a member of the Senate of the state in 1833 and 34. He died in 1835, lamented by all. Our mother, Mary Jane McGee, born October 14th of 1805, died May 29th, 1855. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. That is a beautiful marker. And this is Jane, born October 8th, 1821, died April the 8th, 1832. Elizabeth, born August the 18th, 1833, died September 6th, 1836. Ooh. Eugene, born October 6th, 1835, died June 15th, 1843. And the children of 
Eugene McGee and Martha Jane, I believe. Man, that is so sad. It, it really gets to me. So we will stop with the Mason and McGee plot and we will start up again on our next trip out with the Butts family plot. And I hope you all have a great day. Please like, share, subscribe. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you next time.